right, so this is Griffith's Electrodynamics, problem 2.38. And what we're looking at here is a metal sphere of radius big R. And it's carrying a charge little q. So I'll just write that on there. All right, so metal sphere. Um, okay, and then it's surrounded, surrounded by this spherical shell. an inner radius of A and an outer radius of B, all right, and uh, this shell is uh, net neutral, so it carries no net charge. All right, so uh, we have three parts to this problem. Um, We want to know the surface charge density, sigma, at each of these three surfaces. So the outer surface of the inner uh, sphere here, and the inner surface of the outer shell, and the outer surface of the outer shell. All right. So we know that with uh, conductors, um, when there's just symmetry like this, right, they're just going, the, uh, the charges are just going to spread out evenly on the surface. There's no preferred direction or anything like that. Um, so, and, and if, suppose, you know, we start off very, very briefly um, with, with uh, a, a higher concentration of charge in one particular area, well, that charge is just going to repel each other. There will be components of the electric field in the tangential directions and at, you know, at very, very quickly the charge will just repel itself and spread out until it's as uniformly spread out as it can possibly get. There's no little local areas of higher charge density really because they're perfectly free to move and um, electrostatic repulsion is pretty significant, I mean, so they'll just move. All right, so the, basically it will spread out evenly on each on each surface. So on the, we have this uh, little charge Q here, and we want to know what is the surface charge density at this radius of big R here. So this is, again, the surface of the inner sphere. All right, so have this amount of charge and it's just going to spread out over the area of this sphere. So that's a 4 pi big R squared. Surface area of a sphere of radius big R. Right? Pretty easy. Alright, so now we want to know, uh, let's move outward and we're now looking at the inner surface of this uh, thick outer shell and uh, these Basically, what we get are these charges that um, will will be attracted to whichever whichever sign this is. Let's just call Q positive for now. So, if Q is positive, then um, all the negative charges there will be an equal number of negative charges that will rush to the inner surface here until. Cancels out all the electric field uh, from this inner sphere. Meaning, so there's electric field in between here, but once you get past this surface, once you're inside the conductor, there's no electric field. Remember, there's no electric fields inside conductors because the charges just move to cancel them. So basically, an equal and opposite amount of charge, as is on the, the inner sphere, will come to this inner surface of the outer shell. All right, so all we have is a minus Q, all right? And now, um, so the equal, the charge amount is equal and opposite, but this area uh, in here is not. You can imagine, you know, the field lines, let's just go ahead and draw a few field lines, right? So the field lines will go outward if Q is positive. They're spreading out, right? just like a point charge would, 1 over r squared. Um, and so now they're intercepting a larger area. 
So, um, and and so the the, the uh, surface charge density on the inner surface of the outer shell is not as not as great. So now we have a four pi a squared. All right. Now, uh, now when we start with this conductor that's neutral and we just we just sucked a bunch of the negative charge to the inner surface. Now we have some positive charge left over. Since it's neutral, the amount of positive charge left over is equal to the amount of charge that rushed to the inside. And so that amount of positive charge will repel the other positive charge, excess positive charge that's left in the bulk of the conductor, and it will all rush to the outer shell. So again, oops, wow, draw a Q there, okay. So this is a sigma, okay? And now we're at radius B. And the amount of charge is again equal to Q, and the area again grows now to four pi B squared, all right? All right, so in the end we have basically these surface charges on the outside of the shell which cause an external field and uh, there's still the same amount Q and basically um, on the outside we end up with the same field as we would from the, uh, the charge on the inside. Just you can draw a Gaussian surface if you want. All right. Alright, so now for part B, we're going to find the potential at the center using infinity as the reference point. So our equation for potential will start at some origin, in our case will be infinity. We're going to the center, the electric field and path integral, right? Now the only places where we have E, an E field, right, is outside here on this, uh, outside the very large, outside the thick shell, and then in between the center sphere and the shell, right? Inside the conductors, there's no electric field, and all conductors are at a constant potential, all right, for our purposes. So. Um, all right, and if we just look at Gauss's law, right, again, uh, we've done it a bunch of times, but we have, uh, you put your Gaussian surface out here, count the charges inside, and it'll just have the form of, uh, of a point charge, so just a one over, or a Q over four pi epsilon naught r squared, um, but we just need to know what Q is, so um, if we count, you know, there's a a Q here, a minus Q here, and a Q here, uh, the total charge, then we get a total Q, uh, a total charge of Q on the inside if we have our Gaussian surface here. And if we put our Gaussian surface in between here, we still have just a total charge of Q on the inside. So um, in both these regions where there, where the E field is not zero, that's, uh, where there's not we're, not, we're not in the bulk of the conductor, um, the electric field would just be that of a point charge of Q. All right, so we'll, we can go ahead and do this. So we are integrating from infinity to this outer surface right here at B. And then we have our point charge, just like we talked about, four pi epsilon naught r squared. dr is the only, uh, only the r component of this survives since we our E fields in the radial direction. Now we add on uh, the part here on the inside. And so we're going from the radius of A to the radius of big R. Okay, all right. So we'll just go ahead and do this. Um, 
and I'm going to so we know that the integral of 1 over r squared is just a minus 1 over r and I'm gonna bring these minus signs back in um, so now we have a 1 over r so I did I took this minus sign I don't I didn't factor out the minus sign so a 1 over r evaluated from infinity to b plus a 1 over r evaluated from a to b big R. Okay. All right. So our final answer here for the potential at the center or at any point inside the inner cylinder or the inner sphere is going to be Q over 4 pi epsilon naught. B minus 1 over infinity, so 0, plus 1 over big R minus 1 over A. Q over 4 pi epsilon naught. And the only thing that goes away is this, this uh, term here, which is 0. So 1 over, I'll bring the 1 over big R to the front since it seems more important because it's capital letter, oh boy. All right. Okay, there we go. So here's our potential uh, at the center point or at any point inside or on, you know, this uh, inner sphere. The conductor is an equal potential. So there we go. All right, so part C. So now the outer surface is touched to a grounding wire which drains off charge and lowers its potential to zero, the same as at infinity. How do your answers to A and B change? Okay, so now what we're doing, um, we, so yeah, let's go ahead and write this in. So we had a Q here, we had a minus Q here on the, the inner surface and then on the outer surface we had Q again. So basically um, you can do this in uh, the undergraduate physics lab or whatever but charging something by induction where you you bring it into an electric field and then you ground it and, uh, and then when you take everything away the charged. So what we're basically doing is we, we touch a grounding wire to this outer surface and now this uh, charge Q on the outer surface is going away. It goes off, off leaks off to, to the ground. Right? So now we just have a Q on the inner sphere and a minus Q on the inner surface of the outer shell. All right, so uh, our answer to part A, uh, now this stays the same and this stays the same, but this one will just go to zero. So now, once we leak off the outer charge, we have zero on the outside, so that's fairly easy. How does our how does our uh, our answer for B change? Well, now we look at the uh, electric field, and we see that here's the inner Q, and uh, so a Q on the inner sphere minus Q on this outer sphere, right? So we have these only this inner surface here is charged now, right? And these electric fields will end. There's no more um, positive, you know, if Q is positive, there's no more charge here on the outer surface to give us this field out here, right? Another way of looking at this is just like the problem said, this outer surface here is brought to ground, which is the potential at infinity. So, so now we don't have this integral 
on the outside of this shell. The only place where we have electric field is in between the sphere and the shell. So when we go and we do our, our integration, basically this term will go away. So all we have is this A uh, to big R integration, right? All right, so, and that kills this term in here. And then that kills this, right? Because all we, we want this B and the infinity terms to go away. Uh, the infinity term is already zero, one over infinity, and the only thing that dies is uh, this one over B. So for part C, um, the V is just four, or Q over four pi epsilon naught, one over big R, minus one over little A, and the For part C, the only thing that changes as far as the charge distribution or the surface charge density is that the outer surface of the shell, the charge density goes to zero.